Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about a comic that I read, and I'm going to review it in five minutes. For those who don't know, we used to do much longer reviews of comics and get much fewer viewers, so we're not doing these quick little uh, fun reviews. I'm going to start the timer, and we're going to go... Right, so the comic I read this week was Home, issue three. If you've watched my previous reviews, you will know that I have problems with these, this series of comics. Um, so, it's about a mother and a, and, a, and a son that come across the border during the very controversial um, border control that kind of is still going on. Um, and they look to claim asylum. Um, they get separated. Um, and the boy freaks out, which, uh, rightfully so. He's like seven years old. I don't know what's going on with my camera, by the way, but anyways. Um, and he ends up, um, discovering that he has superpowers he discovers this by blowing a hole in his, in his, you know, uh, uh, in his cell, which is a prison cell, for, you know, for this. Um, and then he goes on the, the run um, and gets away and, and meets up with his aunt, who's his father's sister. Um, his mom, you know, doesn't get away. She's stuck. And then uh, at the end of two, she gets sent back. So uh, it shows her at the airport and then shows her on a bus. She falls asleep. If you see red text, um, the red text is um, Spanish. Uh, all right. So she's worried about her son. Meanwhile, the son's with the aunt. Uh, the mother calls the aunt. You know, is worried about uh, her son. Doesn't know where he is. Aunt fills her in what's going on. She goes... Oh, and he has what seems to be the same powers as uh, your husband, you know, her, her brother. Um, so there's a little bit of backstory. There's actually a lot, way too much um, composition. You know, like just so much text, so dense. Um, this would have been this is a five comic series this would have been better as a seven comic series or eight comic series i don't blame uh image or the production team for this i blame the writer uh when you only have five comics and you seem to be making it up as you go uh, make sure that you pace it properly the second comic had much better pacing this one's fallen off the cliff now there's some really good art well there's a couple of instances of good artwork here, um, particularly when the mother is talking to the son. So the aunt decides that she's going to train him to be more uh, in control of his powers. Uh, now, there's a scene where this guy sees them practicing and he's a really creepy dude in a hat. I mean, he must have been looking for children to take home to his basement. I mean, that's literally what this guy looks like. The, the, the writer obviously couldn't come up with a reason why people would be in a national park. They apparently were in a national park. Um, yeah. I have a big problem with the writing, as you can tell. Okay, so this means to be a five-minute... <laughs> A five-minute review. It's going to go way long. It's going to have a rant afterwards. Um, so he finally gets like some accuracy out of his power. And then the police shop. Now, the guy calls 911 and the police shop in a national park behind a bunch of trees within probably a minute. Uh, aunt puts a very fantastic for um, some visible shield around herself or a very phoenix slash in gray shield around herself um, and then pushes them away. Then the kid 
just starts hacking down trees for no good reason. Uh, like he's helping. Uh, they go running away, get to a body of water. Aunt picks him up and she can fly and they're flying away. Uh, police are kind of like, what the heck's going on? I don't know what's going on. Then it cuts to the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Office, the ICE office. And apparently this kid is like the most important thing ever because these two field agents are like, we're going to get that kid. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then there's letters. Uh, so there's, there's letters to the writer um, and it's only positive stuff. I'll tell you something. There's not a positive outpouring for this book. The first one was way too propagandish. The second one was a snooze fest. The third one's got a better balance, but still nothing happened. It was all about just setting up four and five, I think. Um, he does say something. So time is gone. I'm over five minutes. Uh, did I like this? It was better than the first one because it wasn't over beat, just beat you over the head. With this, this, I'll give it a two out of five. Um, I wish I could recommend. So here's my rant. Begin rant. If you don't want to see me rant about this, goodbye. I understand. Uh, all two people that viewed my videos. Look, he says in here, someone wrote to him and said, hey, as an African-American who experiences America in complicated ways, and uh, that's a very good way of putting it, that um, as an outsider, uh, It is a comp is a very complicated country. Now, you know, I'm white and I'm privileged. Um, but not too long ago, I was new to America and it's a scary place. Um, not for the obvious reasons. You know, you come from a country like where I came from. And uh, when you define scary places is how, what's the, possibility of you getting shot killed raped um etc house broken into car broken into while you're driving your car um america is not scary in that way there, there are parts of america that are um for sure scary but not not as bad as other countries but it's scary in that Uh, when when there is a common evil in a country, and the common evil could be the absolute violence that's taking place, whatever it might be, uh, people tend to see similarities in each other much easier. In America, there's no common evil. You might want to believe there's a common evil, but there's no common evil. Uh, and so everyone's kind of got their own agenda, their own thoughts, their own everything. Um, and so you become jaded in such a way that uh, you become more fearful of the way people behave, will behave at any given moment, which is tough because uh, those people might be uh, emotionally unstable. Okay, so yes, uh, living in America, especially for people of color, especially for minorities and especially for um, those who do not live their life as um, in a predictable way. I hope you know what I mean by that. Um, America is a complicated place. Now, the writer who I've researched to death so this is his first comic. He worked really hard to get this sold. Um, he does not work a fantastical job and just kind of, you know, fell into this. He worked for it. Um, but my, this is what he said in reply. 
Um, you said that an interviewer took uh, issue with the political nature of Nina Simone's um, music. And she said, an artist's duty as far uh, as I'm concerned is to reflect the times. I think that that is true of painters, sculptors, poets, musicians. As far as I'm concerned, it's their choice, but I choose to reflect the times and situations in which I find myself in. That to me is my duty. Now I wanna make, make something very clear. I agree with that. I think that um, especially musicians uh, have a very direct heartbeat monitor to um, people in many countries. Um, and some use it for good and some use it or don't use it uh, for just making money. Um, that being said, it is your duty. If you're gonna take this stance to represent things accurately. What it's not your job to do is to take things that are happening in the news and represent them as that is the full story. And that is what these, these pages are. Under the guise of a superhero kid, which is unfair to every child that has faced this situation, to be able to feel and understand what they're actually going through. This kid has a way to protect himself. This kid has a way to stand up to people. This kid has a way to scare adults away. Kids that really find themselves in the situation do not. There are plenty of kids, white, black, brown, any kind of you want, roaming the streets, homeless, hungry, scared. And when they're not scared, they're viewed as hooligans and are treated worse than dogs that are on the street. I, you know, I live in a nice neighborhood in Silicon Valley. And every time I open next door app, you know, which tells you how old I am, um, you see people picking up dogs on the side of the road or, oh, have you seen this dog? I'm worried about it. Oh, have you seen this dog? I've not seen a single, I have not seen, oh, Rob's coming in by the way. Uh, I have not seen a single posting about the homeless, about the state of the Home Depot, all of that is ignored. So I would have loved for this guy, this is a topic that needs to be shared, to not hide behind a superhero, to not hide behind what the news says is happening, but to actually represent what is really happening. Uh, it is... It's going to drop. Hi, Rob. I was ranting Hello. about oh, Home no. 3. Oh, geez. Home 3 is on the list this week, huh? Yeah. I, uh, I was just saying how uh, ignorant it is for someone to assume that they're in a situation and can write about a situation even though they're not even near to the situation. And the hmm. writer here is um, Latino X. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but he's second generation, I think. Okay. And when his parents came across the border, these were not the laws. And he's taken everything from the news and just said yeah. on surface. I'll tell you one thing. The ICE agents would not spend the time looking for a little boy. Sure. They, even when they get the strongest of um, 
hints or clues or whatever that there's a whole farm of illegal immigrants, they don't go down there. Right. It has to be big. And most of the work happens on the border. It doesn't happen wherever this kid has found himself now. Jim right. Shirley. It's like his, I think I skimmed through three. I think it's like his aunt's home now. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what town they're in though. I think it was in number two that they, they talked about like Minnesota or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he mentions in this one letter that he he so he mentions that Superman was a tale of an immigrant trying to navigate life in a strange place. Uh, barely. Barely. Yeah, that's I, what's funny is I've heard that argument before as well. It's like, well, Superman, it, no. Like, yeah, he's he was okay. So first of all, he came into the country when he or the planet when he was like three months old, sure. And then he got adopted very rapidly, and then he became the savior of the planet within right. years. Right. That's not someone struggling to navigate life in a strange place. Yeah, and I I, I think it would you'd it'd be a stretch to say that the, the Kents were struggling, uh, yeah. a struggling immigrant family. Yeah, uh, definitely not. No. Uh, if you read Kent, <laughs> Kent uh, the Kents 1609, oh, you'll know geez. that they've been in the country since 1609. <laughs> um, and then he says the X-Men and his parallels to the civil rights movement. Now, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely that tone through the X-Men in general. If you look at, at it over two, three hundred comics, yes. um, there's also the theme of how we treat or react to people that are different. And that includes racism, but it also includes uh, the civil rights and, is, and includes disabled people. And people mm -hmm. of different sexual leanings. So it's not just the civil rights uh, movement. Sure. If you've only watched the movies, mm, yeah, these statements are true. And I think that's what's going on here. Um, although he does mention modern day Captain America books, which wrestle with Imperial America. And that's very true. Yes. But in all these cases, they've taken something that's happening in the news and watered it down mm. to adapt to a universe that shouldn't have these problems. So it's up to the reader to bridge the gap or some Reddit post. What they don't do is say that their comic is representing what's happening at this time or six months ago or a year ago. That is yes. so dangerous. If let's say the superhero boy um, came into America to save someone and then uh, was clamped down by the anti-superhero league. Yeah. It's, it's the difference between writing a comic that has parallels, right? Like you could yeah. like, like, even though we've said the Superman immigrant thing is a stretch uh, but it's not so much but a stretch it, to do the it, civil rights parallel, for yeah. mutants. Yeah. But those are parallels. Those comics didn't start with the intent of going into that kind of issue, right? Like, I don't think anyone wrote the X Men thinking, "Man, I can't wait for this to get into civil <laughs> civil laws and and yeah. whether mutants should be treated as people." And the same with Superman. Um, yeah, I mean, Superman but was when, selling but, bonds. Yeah, home, home is so clear. The fact that I don't even remember if it was the first issue. It may have been the first issue in the last panel that you realize that there's a superhero element to it. Right. The whole first issue of the comic was just propaganda. focused on this nightmarish propaganda yeah. thing. Yeah. I. I think uh, for me, there's a difference between commentary mm. and retelling a story. Yeah. 
you know, we can we can bring someone else's channel up here and play a review of Home 3 and go, well, there you go, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Or you can talk about it um, with your opinion. Um, and and there's no opinion here. Um, anyhow, whatever. I'm done. This, there's two <laughs> more comics. There's two, two more, comics. more. Yeah. The pacing is all over the place. Oh, like two, more, two more home comics? Two more home comics. They're only doing five? Okay. The pacing of this comic is just all over the place. They have like the first half of the comic is just text kind of putting things in context. Mm. Your father had this power and blah, 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 blah. Oh, I didn't even get to that. Like I saw that his aunt has like force field powers or something. Also, like the mother ends up going home and she's like, I was like, oh, where are you? She's like, I'm home again. You know, she went on a shopping trip. Yeah. You know, I you know, if she's it seemed running, like a it seemed like such a calm thing. If she's running away from home and she's trying to get in based on uh whatchamacallit? Uh you know, if she's trying to immigrate. Sure, sure, sure. Home would be a scary place to be. Right. Sure. That that doesn't come up at all. Anyhow. Yeah. It, so that, it comic also, that comic <laughs> also has one of the single most confusing conversation double page oh, panels yeah, yeah, I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. It's pretty and though, it's, but it, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty double page, but like that the way that those speech yeah. bubbles are supposed to go doesn't feel right. It yeah. was it was one of the panels where I stopped because I, I wasn't gonna review it and I was just kind of skimming through it. But I saw that and I stopped and I was like, <laughs> I got to try to read this. And I did. And I'm like, oh, this is a nightmare. And can you imagine if they did multiple panels for this oh, conversation? No. Like this is like the comic in general. It's just bad writing. Like yeah. it's really bad writing. Uh, yeah, it's it's so bad. So bad. Unfortunate. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy all five issues just so that because it's gonna go down in history as the worst written comic ever. Uh, gotta have it. All right. Uh, well, that's uh, Home Three <laughs> by Image. Um, and I believe the writer, his name is uh, Julio Ante. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a uh, a uh, UPS store, or a or a a uh, a copy center of some sort, you might see him working there. Oh God, because that's where he works. Yep. Oh, All that's right. right. Yeah, he says that in the kind of the the post. Yeah, his, I don't know. Post free, anyways. Yeah, I looked him yep. up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to stop this video and we're going to do an actual five minute review of whatever Rob yeah. chooses his book to be. Mm, it's going to be exciting, I guarantee you. Thank you all for sitting through this <laughs> really long review. It was fine. <laughs> 25 minutes, I think. Oh, God. All right. Bye, everyone.